Hi, welcome to uh, video three. Okay, here we're going to talk about putting a little muscle uh, behind your affiliate marketing efforts. So in section two, I kind of talked about some of the low cost methods of getting started in affiliate marketing. Um, but there are other ways of kind of leveraging uh, your affiliate marketing efforts uh, to really make a little more money and to become more profitable and actually scale your affiliate marketing business a little quicker. So I'm going to be uh, discussing uh, some strategies that I've personally used uh, over the years um, as far as scaling and growing my affiliate marketing business. Okay, so let's get started. All right, now um, I read a book uh, at a relatively young age, I think around age 20, I read um, Rich Dead Poor Dead. Okay, so Robert Kiyosaki. Probably many of you guys may have read the book. Highly suggest it read. Um, now that I'm older and a more accomplished business person, uh, the book isn't very realistic, um, especially with some of his approaches to real estate investment. But that's a different discussion and also a different course. Um, but one concept or a few concepts uh, that I was exposed to through the uh, book, uh, Rich Dead, Poor Dead, was the concepts of uh, other people's time. OPM, okay, other people's time, uh, OPE, other people's efforts, okay, OPM, other people's money. So um, these concepts of leverage actually do apply in affiliate marketing, okay. Um, now there's several ways uh, to get started earning money online, um, and um, it really depends upon the competition, uh, how competitive your niche is. Uh, how easy it is to rate uh, rank for certain keywords, uh, how uh, niche, uh, how focused your particular product uh, that you're hoping to uh, promote is, uh, how cheap is the paid traffic um, for buying a particular traffic. Um, so um, all of this stuff is crucial um, as far as your ultimate success as a uh, as affiliate marketer. Okay, so. Uh, don't be afraid to use other people's muscle. So what do I mean uh, about this? And pretty much what I'm saying here is that you want to study other affiliates. You want to study other people, uh, especially people that you may be competing against. You want to see what keywords are they trying to rank for. Okay, so by going to some of your, comp your competitors' blogs, especially for some of those long tail keywords that you're trying to come up number one, number two, number three in Google. Okay, so go to the site that ranks number one. What are they doing with the SEO? Okay, uh, maybe go to spyfu.com, S-P-Y-F-U.com, S-P-Y-F-U.com, spyfu, kind of like Kung Fu, but spyfu. Okay, they allow you to show some of the keywords to certain websites. So just take the domain of your competitor, put it in a uh, spyfu uh, program, and I mean, they have a paid version that you can kind of use for a few basic searches. Uh, you may want to consider investing in SpyFu because it'll give you a full breakdown of all the keywords, paid keywords, so words that your competitors are actually paying for, as well as SEO, words that they're uh, possibly ranking for. And you want to copy that. I mean, there's no uh, governing body that says it's illegal to copy someone else's uh, SEO or their paid traffic plan. Now, some people may consider this unethical, but as I said, are you gonna, you know, burn in hell because you copy, um, you know, someone's SEO, uh, some words that they rank for, and you try to rank for those keywords? Like keywords don't belong to people. Now, maybe get it may get a little unethical if you're trying to rank for branded keywords, um, because that may violate some of the terms or the terms of service for a particular affiliate program. So you can't go sign up for the Nike.com affiliate program and then try to outrank Nike for the word Nike. Okay, maybe you can't bid on the word Nike.com or Google AdWords. Like these things may be considered unethical um, in the eyes of your affiliate uh, manager. But as far as long term, uh, long tail keywords are concerned, and as far as really looking at what your competitors are ranking for or trying to rank for, um, don't make it a moral call. So this is what I call by using other people's muscles. So if they've done enough uh, research to decide um, that a particular keyword is easy to rank for, easy to rank for, or a particular keyword is very profitable. 
So they're willing to pay top dollar for a particular keyword. If they're willing to do that, then that lets you know that they're making money with that particular keyword. So there's nothing keeping you from actually bidding for that same keyword. Okay. So um, that's one way that I could call about uh, using other people's money, uh, muscles. Sorry. Okay. Um, another tip um, is that you don't want to beat around the bush. All right. You don't want to beat around the bush. Um, a lot of affiliate marketers, um, especially ones that get started out, they don't want to necessarily spend money on advertisement. Okay. They'll rather promote, uh, rather want to concentrate on kind of the bum marketing uh, skill sets that I talked about in an earlier video, or they want to do some article marketing, or they solely want to just do YouTube videos and do reviews. Um, and nothing's wrong with that approach. Um, but ultimately, uh, this kind of model is really changing. So we talk about putting a little muscle behind your marketing strategy. Uh, once you start to find some profitable uh, keywords and some profitable affiliate programs, you may really want to start to try to spend some money on some advertisements. So you don't necessarily have to start with Google AdWords because that's kind of uh, unprofitable, for, especially for a lot of people getting started. But Bing ads, uh, Facebook ads, uh, YouTube ads are relatively cheap. You can still get some of those as cheap as uh, as low as five cent. Uh, Facebook ads are a little more expensive now, but Bing is really nice source uh, for kind of cheap uh, paid advertisement. So you bid on keywords related to your particular product or service. So in our case, we can bid on keywords like CrossFit product review or CrossFit shoes. Again, going back to the CrossFit shoe example, we have a CrossFit shoe review site. Okay. Um, so you want to uh, leverage, you know, keywords, especially those words that have been profitable for you. And hopefully by this time, you've implemented some type of tracking, some type of affiliate program um, analytics where you can kind of see which keywords are generating the most profitable uh, click throughs for you. You want to try to leverage those keywords fully by not only trying to optimize your, web your website in an SEO manner, but also um, being willing to pay for some actually paid traffic related to those uh, keywords so the whole model is really going towards uh, this whole idea of you know paying to play sort of to speak okay now if you look here um, this diagram this is kind of what I call kind of the article marketing this is a very bum marketing s uh, philosophy um, it doesn't work as much as it did or doesn't work as well as it did there are still people doing article marketing but the quality of the article is key. Um, it's no longer sensible. It no longer works to go to ezinearticles.com, post a very uh, cheap outsourced article. Maybe you got it written up in Pakistan or India or Philippines. Or maybe someone doesn't have a full control of the English language. Maybe it's full, full of typos and grammatical errors and you post it with a link at the bottom of the article going to your particular website. This used to work really well. Um, this is something that Travis Sago uh, really emphasized in his bone marketing method. Um, now, most people um, are really focusing on high-end uh, articles. So they're posting high-quality articles on medium.com. So medium.com. Uh, also Quora, uh, the question and answer site. They're posting high-quality answers to certain questions related to their niche and then have a link go back to their website. So article marketing is still alive and well, but not in the sense that a lot of people uh, share it. It's really gone high quality. So if your article is not high quality, uh, people aren't going to click through to check out your blog. Okay. All right. So uh, one thing that I definitely have to um, emphasize um, ultimately with your affiliate marketing efforts, any online marketing efforts, you always want to be growing a list. Okay, you want to be growing a responsive list, a list that you have a great relationship with. Okay, so bronze, so brains over bronze, okay, can lead to six figures. So that's the name of this particular slide. So um, what you want to do or what you want to eventually develop, you want to develop what we call lead magnet. Okay, so you want to give something away for free to capture someone's email. This needs to be something of perceived high value. Okay, so it needs to be maybe a high quality uh, ebook. Uh, related to maybe some CrossFit exercise routines or increase your pull-ups by 10 
okay, or increase your squats uh, by, you know, 120 kilos or whatever. Okay, so have something related to the market. So I'm still sticking with the story of having a site where we promote shoes for CrossFitters. So I need to develop some kind of lead uh, magnet, some type of ebook uh, related to the CrossFit demographic. Okay, and I can ultimately uh, get those people to sign up for this particular book. Okay, or how to find the perfect shoes for your CrossFit workout. That'd be actually a great ebook to offer on our website. So people sign up, they download the ebook. You know, want to make sure that it has a decent amount of value um, related to selecting the right foot, uh, right shoe uh, for your feet, not the right foot. Hopefully, you aren't selling feet. Um, that might be a pretty profitable affiliate program, but I don't know how legal it'll be selling feet online. Okay, um, so you want to make sure that you provide a decent amount of value. Um, so maybe some photos of top uh, CrossFit shoes, uh, maybe some um, some of the videos that you did, maybe some links to some of the videos that you did. So just want to make sure that whoever downloads this, they don't feel like they got scammed. So you can spam the hell out of them um, just by giving them your email address. So you want to make sure that this is value, and you want to create a landing page uh, for your particular. Uh, lead magnet um, and maybe from your videos you have some uh, some links going to your landing page or maybe if you decide to invest and actually get into some paid traffic you might want to make sure that you do some paid uh, traffic to your landing page where people can then submit their email download the book uh, that has a few affiliate links I actually have a few links uh, in your mailing list so you get them to sign up for your mailing list and maybe for seven or ten days, you can write them a small letter, a small note, uh, where you offer them uh, different types. We offer them different types of, uh, you know, tips and tricks related to their CrossFit training. Uh, different uh, tips and tricks related to uh, athletic shoes, or how to select the appropriate athletic shoe for the particular uh, exercise or sports that you're preparing for. So it needs to all be related and cohesive to everything that you're promoting. Okay, so you don't want to offer a lead magnet on, um, you know, how to lose baby fat, okay, or how to gain 30 pounds, because everyone that's looking to gain 30 pounds isn't necessarily going to be looking for shoes to use in CrossFit. So you need to make sure that your landing page, the programs that you promote, the affiliate programs that you promote, the content in the ebook, the value add, the demographic, the everything speaks the same language. Now, this is a mistake that I did very on in my early on in my affiliate career is that I collected emails, but I never really emailed people. I never really sent promotions to them. Is this kind of something I did because I was told the money's in the list, the money's in the list, the money's in the list, but I never fully monetized uh, the actual list. So I probably left um, several hundred thousand dollars if you consider I've been doing affiliate marketing uh, since 05, probably on the table. Uh, because I didn't develop a very responsive list. So the numbers not in the list, the numbers in the responsive list, meaning that people actually reply and engage with what you send them. They actually get excited um, when you mail them something versus like, oh man, what is this guy talking about again? What is he what is he offering? What is he selling again? What is he pushing? Okay. So um, one uh, tip uh, that I offer um, is that if you have trouble, you're not a good writer, Okay, I'm a good writer, but it takes me a long time to write. Okay, so I'm not a quick writer, but I'm a decent writer. Um, uh, so you can outsource a lot of your content. So if you wanted to come up uh, with an ebook idea related to some training tips um, or how to select the best uh, shoe for CrossFit or not, you know, you can go to websites such as freelancer.com or odesk.com or uh, now I think it's Upwork, it's no longer odesk.com or fiverr.com and you can actually hire um, a content writer okay um, both to write content for your ebook as well as to write content for your mailing list so when people actually join your mailing list to download your free ebook okay they can now get um, you know mail several times a week with content related to that ebook related to what you're promoting related to um, everything that your business is about for that particular niche so you're adding value and consistently adding value by doing what they call drip marketing. So DRIP marketing. You can look up a lot of drip marketing, tons of videos on setting up a mailing list, or autoresponders, and that kind of thing. So 
Um, hopefully you have some ways that you can kind of leverage your affiliate marketing uh, from just posting articles on article sites to kind of really putting some muscle uh, behind your affiliate marketing efforts. So hopefully you have a better idea about how you can leverage some of those items. Um, and so one other thing, and this is just kind of a, um, a last point, I kind of elaborated on this. Um, you definitely want to be able to, or want to establish a responsive list. And one way and only way of establishing a responsive list is to A, create value. And I know I'm being very repetitive here, and that's for a purpose because I did not follow this advice. So I'm kind of talking to myself uh, somewhat, or kind of kicking myself, maybe being, uh, maybe punishing myself for not following this rule and kicking myself, uh, proverbially, of course. Um, you want to make sure that you have a well oiled machine. So you call it your affiliate marketing machine. So you want to get people to your site, uh, get them to download a free uh, ebook, get them on your mailing list, constantly giving them content related to your niche, uh, constantly promoting other affiliate programs that may be of value to them. Um, if you really listen to uh, what I've emphasized in this particular video, it's all about value. Okay. Don't send people junk. That's the quickest way for people to label you as spam. That's the quickest way for people um, to write bad reviews or start to troll you on different forums. It's all about value. You need to make sure that you enhance the person's life. Okay. Um, all right. You want to make sure that everyone that you touch, everyone that signs up for your particular uh, mailing list or whatnot, that you enhance their life in some regards. Okay, you add greater value. You make them a better person than they were before they came in contact with your website, with your ebook, or they became a member of your uh, mailing list. Okay, if you do that, if you think about adding value, then you will definitely um, have a upmanship on uh, other competitors because a lot of affiliates are unscrupulous because the only value they're concerned about is the economic value in their pocket. They're not necessarily concerned about the lifetime value of people on their mailing list. Um, and once you get someone on your mailing list, you know, um, they're worth money. OK, and it's almost you, you can almost equate it to kind of a digital ATM. So anytime you need some additional cash or something, you, you email them something of value, promote a, a affiliate program or a product or a service that's going to enhance their life even further and add greater value. And because they've gotten value from you previously, they're going to continue to um, look to you for advice so as I mentioned um, you're definitely going to need a constant source of content uh, you can outsource this as I said personally I'm a good writer but it takes me a long time to write I'm very slow and methodical about my writing and maybe even a bit critical about some of my writings at times uh, so to leverage this you want to maybe look at outsourcing some writing all right, so um, now we're coming up on section four. So in the next video, I'm going to talk about how to find the perfect product uh, for your market. So we'll talk about product market fit uh, within the context of affiliate marketing. So hopefully you have some st uh, strategies on leveraging affiliate marketing um, to the fullest. Um, and I will continue to add additional strategies uh, in this course um, as I come by them, as I think of them or whatnot. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, Feel free to message me and are to leave a post on the discussion board and we'll go from there. Talk to you soon.